there are different models uh, to try to explain the diversity of life. So in addition to the evolutionary model, there are the creation and intelligent design models. Now, it is appropriate to doubt, to question, to propose new models. That is what scientists are supposed to do. But then one should then test these models. So the creation model holds that all organisms, which are not in a quote kind, are unrelated to each other. That um, once uh, that at some point in perhaps not the uh, too distant past, that all organisms appeared and that this was a sudden supernatural event, not a gradual biological change. So when one compares the biological molecules, the uh, DNA sequences, the amino acid sequences of proteins, one should not necessarily expect to see relationships between organisms which are 100% unrelated. One should not see a pattern of similarities, like the nested hierarchy pattern of, um, that the evolutionary model predicts if organisms are equally unrelated, if they are not in a kind, you know, um, then they are just as unrelated to each other as they are to rocks or to, to fungi, to plants. They have zero relationship. I'm using the word kind because some creationists have modified the original creationist claim, saying that evolution can occur within a group, a, a kind, but that no kind could evolve from another. Well, that's fine. That's a hypothesis which can be tested because one can then look for these kinds which have shared um, a recent common ancestry in the past couple thousand years versus um, organisms which are unrelated. So for example, if one were to propose that the family uh, was a kind, then one could compare the DNA sequences and say, oh yes, within the family, look, they're very similar. They must have had a common ancestor in the past couple thousand years. But no member of this family has any relationship to members of different kinds outside the family. Some intelligent design advocates have said, oh, if there are similarities, maybe it represents a, a common design for, say, the same diet. All right, that could be easily tested. In this model, say, herbivores would then have similarities um, because the similarities are based on their common diet compared to, say, carnivores, which would have a completely you know, different uh, set of similarities or, or, or sequences. So these models make predictions which can be tested. And given that an overwhelming number of genetic studies have been performed, it would then be easy you know, to evaluate, do the creationist and design predictions match the observations uh, in genetic comparisons uh, between living things? And the answer is a resounding no. There is no evidence for the creation and design predictions. In fact, the uh, overwhelming amount of evidence that has been uh, obtained overwhelmingly refutes these predictions. So whether one compares the sequences of primates or carnivores or birds or turtles or fish or plants or fungi or protists or bacteria, whether one compares um, uh, amino acid uh, sequence uh, coding uh, genes uh, or whether one can uh, um, compares the RNA uh, nucleotide coding uh, genes, or intergenic DNA, or mitochondrial DNA versus nuclear DNA. No matter the comparison which is performed, the results are the nested hierarchy of relationships consistent with the evolutionary model, uh, which is the exact opposite of what is predicted by the creation and design models. There are no studies which support these models. So while it is wonderful to come up with alternate ideas and alternate uh, um, explanations and hypotheses, that's what scientists should do. One should then test these. And when an overwhelming amount of data refutes a model, it then is rejected as false.